Hello and welcome to Barbara's Podcast. This is the show for women, all about health, nutrition, and wellness. It's the show that will empower you and inspire you to create a healthier lifestyle. Well, hello and welcome. I'm Barbara Karafokas and I'm thrilled to introduce Dr. Amanda Adkins. She's a board certified internal medicine specialist and is a health and nutrition coach, especially for women with high blood pressure and diabetes. Welcome, Dr. Amanda. Hello, thank you so much for having me, Barbara. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. So let's dive in. Uh, Dr. Amanda, could you share more about your personal experience transitioning to a plant-based lifestyle? You know, what were the key moments that inspired this change and how did it impact your overall well-being? Oh, yes. I um, love answering this question, but I always tell people it is a long story because it started decades ago. Um, my actual health and wellness journey started back when I was a freshman in high school, <clears throat> which means I was about 13 or 14 years old. And we had to do what they called a presidential physical fitness test. And at that time, they had us weigh ourselves to get our BMI. Um, and I weighed 199 pounds as a teenager. Oh my and I was goodness. like, oh my goodness. Uh, you know, you look in the mirror, you're like, oh yes, I know I'm overweight, but I didn't know I weighed that much. And so I vowed at that time that I would never let two be the first number of my weight. And I wanted to be healthier because I have heart, um, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, cancer in my family. Um, so I did what any teenager would do at the time. I was like, okay, I wasn't exercising, so I'm going to start exercising. But then at the age of, of 16, a few years later, I decided to become a vegetarian. And, and people always ask me, like, what made you stop eating meat? And I was like, I was just trying to lose weight and be healthy. I did not know anything about vegetarianism or anything like that, of how well it actually affects your health um, for the good. I was just like, I'm trying something out to see if this actually helps me. And it's actually funny because my dad at the time was a meat delivery truck driver. So all we had in the house was like bacon, sausage, hot dog, um, bologna, all those processed meats. And so for me to say, I'm not going to be eating those meats anymore, they're like, what in the world is going on? Um, and it, it, it still took decades later for me to actually learn about actual plant-based nutrition after I finished residency and um, was actually practicing medicine. And actually one of my patients turned me on to Dr. Joel Furman um, nice. and actually started to learn more about, um, you know, eating uh, full, full plants, whole plants, and um, actually learning how that actually can help prevent and or reverse chronic illnesses like high blood pressure and diabetes, which ran in my family. So it started back when I was a teenager and it's just been my journey. So that's why I just tell people your health is always a journey. Um, you never actually arrive. You're always just, you know, trying to work towards the best health that you can actually have for yourself. So um, that's the, that's the short of the story. <laughs> yeah, it is a journey. It is a journey. I don't think, you know, uh, for anyone, I always say Rome wasn't built in a day. Exactly. You're always, de you know, developing, you research, you experiment until you find what's actually, you know, good for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you might not find that immediately. You know, you've got you've got to experiment. Um, well, I find it extremely fascinating that you incorporate spiritual guidance into your approach. How do the spiritual tenets of gratitude and treating the body as a temple and the continual journey uh, that play a role in the plant-based lifestyle you advocate? Yeah, I actually grew up in the church. Um, and so my grandparents always instilled in me, you know, spirituality, praying, you know, using God uh, to actually help guide you. And mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of people, especially in, in the church, they were always like trying to separate the two, like the physical and the spiritual, like, their physical body, they were just like, well, I'll just pray and God will make it better. And I was like, no, he actually has, you know, scriptures that actually talk about how you're supposed to treat your body. And so I just feel like, because I didn't know what I was doing at the age of 16, that he was actually using my own story to actually then go back and, you know, 
you know, inspire, you know, people of the church to actually make sure that they're actually living out their best life in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm. And so I feel that more people actually gravitate towards me that's actually people of faith and Christianity because I actually use both together and they can actually see that now. They're like, okay, yes, I de definitely want to live a better physical life so then I can be better, better spiritually to actually build up the kingdom of God better. Um, because we don't want to be sick, you know, you know, Satan really attacks the body and attacks the mind. So if we're not healthy in all aspects, it's very hard for us to actually carry out what we're supposed to do. And it just keeps me going also. So I just like for to inspire others at where they actually come from. Well, we are, you know, there's the belief we are tripod beings. Uh, exactly. Body, mind and spirit. So think in any healing regimen, we should take all those three into account. Exactly, exactly. And so yeah. people find it interesting that I do that because I'm a physician, but I was like, that's that's just me. Before I even became a physician, I was a, a woman of faith, so. Uh, yeah, so well, there are, I was quite surprised actually, because there are a number of physicians that take, you know, that are atheists, I suppose, you know, it's this, the, the science, Exactly. Is that a religion in itself? <laughs> yes. But I always tell people, it doesn't have to be separated. You know, God created us. He had made physicians also so we can use the science and the spirit together and make everything better. <laughs> yeah. Um, so transition to a plant-based lifestyle can pose challenges for many. What are the common hurdles um, individuals face and how do you guide them through these obstacles considering both the physical and spiritual aspects of their well-being. Yeah, so the hardest part I think for people is to wrap their mindset around not eating meat. Because like I said, growing up, I think that's why I have that um, journey of their like, um, especially in African-American community where it's like, you know, meats, meat, meat, and meat, and maybe a vegetable here every now and then. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> So um, I usually tell them to start adding in vegetables to every single meal. So that that's usually where they're not feeling like they have to take something away and they're going to be deprived of something. So it's just making them rethink how they're actually going to um, look at their plate and then actually using one of the scriptures like you will, you will transform your mind um, and not be conformed to the world. So that's one of the scriptures that I use that they can actually see, okay, um, I used to think this way and now I have to think another way to actually build better health and wellness. And so that's the usually the biggest obstacle that people have to overcome is to notice that they don't have to have meat. Um, and it's it could be something on the side, but it doesn't have to be your main dish. And when they actually think of it as, okay, am I causing health or disease in my body? Um, how am I going to actually look at it that way? So it was like, we always want to promote health. And so we talk about life and death. We have the power to produce life and death um, spiritually and physically. So we want to think, are we putting in life into our body? Or are we uh, um, you know, causing more death into our body? And either we live more or we die more. So um, I try to use all those aspects and look at it from a medical side and a spiritual side. So a lot of people resonate with that and because it's just like, oh, you know, just like something else clicks in their mind when they hear that uh, put in that certain way. And I use that for not only my clients and coaching, but also um, my patients that actually come in because um, a lot of people are drawn to me because of the things that I do also. So they just see it all as a, a win win situation. Yeah, I think that's so true. That's so true what you've just mentioned, whether, you know, you have a choice when you eat something that you could ask whether it'll do you good or whether it'll do you harm, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's very simple. It is, it is. We don't have to make it complicated. And people are like, oh. well, I, I know to do that. I'm like, but are you doing it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> it's getting past, I think, the programming of, um, you know, the meat. Uh, yeah. I always say as well, and I think a lot of people treat vegetables as a little side dish. And I thought, well, no, exactly. you've got to switch it around. You've got to mm -hmm. treat fruit and vegetables as the main meal and everything exactly. else is a side dish. 
<laughs> yes, yes. And that's what I tell them too. So we we'll start to rearrange how the plate looks. Exactly. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, could you perhaps elaborate on some specific health uh, changes you've witnessed, um, either personally or in the, those you've guided? Yes. So I'll start out with myself. Um, I believe that I was a pre-diabetic at um, age 13 and 14 when I actually go back and look at myself. Um, but because we didn't go to the doctor much, I don't know that. And then also in the 90s, they weren't really uh, checking um, uh uh, children for diabetes and things that they do now. Um, so I just believe that I was able to decrease the insulin resistance that I was actually experiencing um, as I just look at my journey um, with eating more plants, less processed foods, and exercising. And then also in my clients, I've had a patient that actually was able to help decrease her blood pressure without adding in more medications. Um, and she was able to do that over like a 12 week period of time. We worked together um, specifically for her blood pressure over 12 weeks. And it was so funny that she even went to the doctor after working with me and um, her nurse checked her blood pressure and it was like 128 over like 70 something um, or 80 something. It was something very much lower than what she was experiencing before. And she said her doctor even came in and rechecked the blood pressure because she couldn't believe it, it was actually that low. <laughs> because she was like, I know I didn't add in any more medications for you or anything, what have you been doing? And it was those simple changes, like adding in more fruits and vegetables, making you know meat a more of a side dish than a main dish, um, making sure she's not stressing and you know doing her meditations, exercising, um, just all the things that are simple things that we know to do, she was just actually implementing those and actually able to see her blood pressure come down. Um, and then also I've had uh, patients with uh, diabetes that actually were able to control their blood sugars better and not have to necessarily go on insulin because they actually was like, okay, I do not want to have injections. I don't have to have shots. So I'm going to do whatever you say. If I can't have bacon, I'm going to, you know, grieve it for a moment and then not have the bacon. And they were able to avoid having to go on insulin because they were able to make some of the lifestyle changes. Again, most of my clients and patients are not 100% plant-based. They're more like 80%. And I like to tell them that's what works for you. Again, you can use meat as a side dish. And a lot of them are very happy because they see the results, but feel like they're still not deprived because they still think they have to have a little bit of meat on the side sometimes. So I was like, that's okay. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good compromise. You know, if they're getting the good results, why not then? Exactly. You know, it's, it's different for everyone. Yes, yes. And so I'm glad that they, they get the results that way. So then, because a lot of people were in, intimidated to come and talk with me because they know I did not eat meat at all. And I was like, well, that was just my journey. But, you know, knowing the science that you can still have, you know, a little bit of meat on the side. Of course, the, the best results were 100%. But still, as long as you move the direction of being more and more plant-based, you still get some good results health-wise. I think, well, if they, and if, when they see that. Yes. Uh, it, it, then I guess it, it's, uh, um, it helps to convince them even more. Exactly. Positive reinforcement. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and e even before like the blood pressure numbers may come down or they're, you know, they, they're starting to come off medications. They have more energy. They have less joint pain. They're not as achy. Um, and those types of things reinforce. And I tell um, people that you can experience that in as little as five days. And I have people go through a, like a little five day challenge and they're like, oh, I didn't know I could feel so good in five days. I'm like, the power of plants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're very lucky here. We're, you know, living in Cyprus with the Mediterranean diet because I always say an, an, an authentic Mediterranean diet already incorporates a lot of plant-based meals. Yes. yes. So uh, I always say we've got to go back to our roots. Yes. Because sadly here, um, you know, living the modern lifestyle, there's a lot of families that don't have time to cook and they do eat a lot of junk food, um, which is sad because they have yes. it on their back doorstep. Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the Mediterranean diet because I have a lot of people here in the U.S. that ask about that. And I tell them also, like you said, still the, the um, actual base, the foundation of that is plants. 
it's not yes. it's not the it's not the fish because that's what they usually think of oh it's more fish you know i was like yeah they have that on there but it's it's higher up the pyramid but the base is still the plant so if we can add in that um then we'll be a lot better so i'm glad you mentioned that <laughs> yeah well traditionally they only ate red meat once a week it wasn't that's more than that see that's good yes yeah do you have, do you work with any um, supplementation, like perhaps adding in some magnesium or chromium to help um, your clients metabolize um, blood sugar better? Oh. So uh, everybody is different. Like in my coaching, I don't have people add in a, a lot of extra supplements. Sometimes in our um, a five day challenge, there are a list of supplements that you can try. Um, but I always tell them that's, you know, have to discuss that specifically with your physician just to make sure it's not interacting with any of the medications. So I don't want to say, yeah, take this, this, and this. Um, but in like when I'm working with someone as a physician, then yes, we'll look at the different things that they can take. So, um, especially if they're a hundred percent plant-based, it's like vitamin B12, vitamin D, um, you can add in magnesium. I have some people that do uh, chromium or uh, cinnamon also that helps with blood sugar stabilization. But I also tell them that if you do a wide variety of plants and, um, you know, fruits and vegetables, that you can get a lot of different things there if it's different colors and different types of food. Um, and you get a lot more because um, I tell people I'm pretty uh, frugal and so I, I don't like to spend extra money where I don't have to. So if I can get it in the food that I'm already buying, I really like to emphasize that. But um, after you get to a certain point, then you can add that in. Most of my people are still just um, starting. So I was like, we don't want to supplement a bad diet. We want to actually get the good diet first and then add in the supplements later. Yeah. No, I, I'm a big uh, cinnamon user. I'll use it everywhere in my breakfast and <laughs> smoothies. <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. Uh, oatmeal, sweet potatoes. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, in the smoothies, the add in that little kick. Yes, it's wonderful. <laughs> Um, so as a health coach with a medical background, how do you strike a balance between providing, you know, the, um, advice backed by medical knowledge and incorporating a spiritual approach to support individuals in their, um, health journey? So when I'm doing the coaching, it's more of like, I do it as a group. Um, and if you're individual, I don't necessarily say that you have to do it this way. I just give you suggestions on these are different things that you can do and then let them choose. And because it's more of the coaching approach, you empower the actual client to make their own decisions and then use their spiritual background to actually tie it together. So again, most of the clients I work with are, you know, faith based Christians. And so we really use that to have them make their choices. Um, sometimes in the physician role, though, I'm more of a, you know, dictator. I hate to use that <laughs> word, but it's like, OK, we don't have a choice now. Like sometimes, you know, if they're starting out, I'm like, OK, we can kind of see where you go. But sometimes like I put my foot down. No, we cannot okay. let you leave out of here without medication because, you know, I had a patient just the other day that their blood sugar was 900. No, we're not letting you out of here without insulin. No, we're not letting you out here without checking your blood sugars, you know, things like that. Whereas in the coaching side, I've been like, so these are the things you can do as far as your diet and lifestyle to change. But I'm not going to tell you you have to go on medication. That's, you know, more of your doctor's role there. So you definitely have to make sure that you don't cross those boundaries with the two. And I definitely let my coaching clients know that in advance that they definitely still have to have their own primary care physician to actually look at those things um, to make sure that they're still doing the best for their body. because. Some, unfortunately, some people still need some medication. Um, not everyone can be um, zero medications totally, but we try to get you the least amount of medications um, on the coaching side to actually talk with your physician to decrease your medicine as much as possible. So it's, it's looking at it that way when, when I have my two roles. <laughs> and it, can be, it, can, it could be a, a goal to reduce the medication and to say, well, okay, you need to take it now because it's dangerous not to take it. Yes but we can I, work towards reducing it. Yes, and, and that's, that is one of the um, roles in my physician practice also that I see a lot of people have actually, um, actually sought me out because they're like, oh, I heard you don't like to prescribe medication. I said, 
well, I'll prescribe it, but I want you to actually do your part also. And it's our goal to always, like you said, decrease the amount. If, even if we started at this point in time, no matter what it's for, our goal is always to try to decrease it. So if you do your work at home, you do your homework, then it makes it easier on me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's getting the it's 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 getting them to that point. So yeah, um, well, with your core values, um, which include a focus on long term healthy lifestyle and partnerships, how do you guide individuals to maintain you know a plant based lifestyle for the long haul, and um, perhaps considering the importance of spiritual motivation and continual growth in mind, body, and spirit. Yes. So we talk about that as they're transitioning out of my program. Like, what are those factors that you would need to look out for that you feel like you're going off track? Um, and then we make sure that they have a setup of maybe like three to five things that they, they do to get themselves back on track. So whether it's um, eating a big raw salad, you know, um, doing your meditation um, right before you decide what to eat. Uh, make sure you're drinking a full glass of water because a lot of people when they go on vacation or holidays they're just like inching off the path and they don't feel like they don't notice that they're off the path until it's like oh my goodness i've gained five pounds what have i been doing and so if they already have that in place on what they're going to do when they notice they're off then that gets them easier back on the path and that's some of the things that i've done for myself actually over the years when i feel like oh you know i'm going off like what's going on and i'm, I'm especially the holidays, that that's a bad time for me. Because um, it's family, they're always around, there's always you know extra sweets and everything. Um, but then for the spiritual side, it's always those anchor verses that I have, um, transforming your mind, um, whatever you eat or drink, um, do everything for the glory of God. Um, and remember that your body is a temple. They come back to those and they actually meditate on those scriptures and like um, reflect on what they've been doing over the past you know week, month, and whatever it is to get them back on track. And so again, I always tell them, give yourself grace. It's always a journey. Um, it's never, um, you're doing bad. It's always, oh, you know, I've gone a little bit backwards, but I can, you know, turn it around. And I tell them we all have that. It's not, um, it's not detrimental. As long as you're still alive, you have a chance to change things around. So they really take that into heart because a lot of people are my yo-yo dieters. And so they would you know, go hard for a little bit and then they go fall off track and they just go back to what they were doing before. But when they have that actual foundation and in, in, in those uh, three to five steps in place, it's easier for them, excuse me, to get back on track. And they they love that. So, yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of people that do the yo-yo dieting. It yeah. takes um, quite a bit of, um, I think, discipline and determination to get past that. And mm -hmm. to actually um, incorporate or you know add you know the healthy habits yes. and develop them uh, and make them stick and then add in a few more. Uh, yes, yes. So you have the, the foundation and you do so. Yeah, no, no. I'm saying yeah, the foundation or the beginnings always quite d difficult to mm -hmm. to lay down. But I think once they get past that. Uh, exactly exactly so that's when they feel more empowered like i i know what to do i know how to go back go back to it and keep going yeah yeah well in closing um where if um could someone get in touch with you um if they would like to join one of your programs so everything is on my website at www.dramandamd. So it's like dramandamd.com. Um, I have my private coaching program on there. When I do have my um, five-day group programs, usually it's uh, once a quarter, they will be on there. Um, you can also sign up for my uh, newsletter. So you'll be the first people to know when uh, those programs start. Um, and then also I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Dr. Amanda Atkins and YouTube channel. I always forget my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll add in all the socials in the podcast description. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, it was lovely having you on the podcast. 
Thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to you, Barbara. So I appreciate you having me on. It was my pleasure. It was my pleasure. Thanks for listening to Barbara's podcast. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter or e-courses. Celebrate life and see you at the next episode.